Hello, and welcome to History According to Gorgos. In this episode, I will be covering the pacification of Livia, or also known as the Second italo senussi War, which was a conflict between Italian forces and the Senussi Order, an indigenous rebel group from Livia between 1923 and 1932. Before we go on, some of you may be asking yourselves, where's Livia? Well, Livia is a northern African Arab country, below Italy, which is here. Also, some places and cities I will talk about are the Sirte Desert, Gatavames region, the northern lowlands of Cyrenaica, Jebel Akhtar, Tumo, Benghazi, Solonta, Suluk, and Kufra. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's begin. In 1912, Italy seized military control of Libya from the Ottoman Empire during the Italo-Turkish War, but the new colony quickly revolted, transferring a large amount of territory to the local Libyans. During World War I, Libya erupted into major violence due to the collaboration of the Senussi Order with the Ottomans against the Italian troops. By 1917, Italy was exhausted of fighting Senussi rebels and signed the Treaty of Acroma, which acknowledged the independence of Libya from Italian control, and the Republic of Tripolitania was soon after founded by the Tripolitanian rebels. Although the rest of the country remained under nominal Italian rule, local resistance against Italy continued until 1920, when the Italian government was forced to recognize Senussi leader Sayyid Idris as Emir of Cyrenaica and granted him autonomy in 1922. Sayyid was offered the position of Emir of Tripolitania, but the new Italian government of Benito Mussolini initiated a campaign of reconquest before he could accept the title, and instead he went into exile in Egypt on December 1922. The campaign started due to a much more aggressive approach to foreign policy by the fascist party, giving Libya much more importance as part of the new Italian Empire. They also took advantage of the claim that many killings of Italian soldiers and civilians had been made by the Ottoman and local Muslim guerrillas, such as the slaughter in Skiriat, where for example, in a mosque 17 Italians had been crucified. Italy started the war by using aircraft, motor transport and good logistical organization to occupy 150,000 square kilometers of territory in five months. By invading the Sirte Desert, Italy cut off the physical connection between Cyrenaica and Tripolitania. From 1923 to 1924, Italian troops regained all the territory north of the Guandames Mizdat Benim Ulid region, with four fifths of the estimated population of Tripolitania and Fezzan within the Italian area. Italy also regained the northern lowlands of Cyrenaica but attempts to occupy the forested hills of Jebel Akhtar were met with strong guerrilla resistance, which was led by Omar Mukhtar, a tribal chief who was now the Senussi's new leader. Badoglio was sent to Libya in 1928 to serve as governor of the colony for five years. Negotiations between Italy and Omar Mukhtar broke down and Italy then planned for the complete conquest of Libya. By late 1928, the Italians had taken control of Jibla and its tribes were disarmed. And in 1930, Italian forces conquered Fezzan and raised the Italian flag in Tumo, the southernmost region of Fezzan. And Badoglio had the Air Force use chemical warfare against the Verduin rebels in the desert and invaded the northern desert of the Cyrenaica. In 1931, 12,000 Cyrenaicans were executed, and the nomadic people of the northern Cyrenaica were forcefully removed from their region and relocated to huge concentration camps in Cyrenaica lowlands. By the end of 1931, half of the population of Cyrenaica were confined to 15 concentration camps. The Italian military authorities also carried out the forceful migration and deportation of the entire population of the Jebel Akhdar region. This resulted in 100,000 nomadic people being expelled from their homes. 
These 100,000 people, mostly women, children, and the elderly, were forced to march across the desert to a series of barbed wire concentration camps built near Benghazi, where by 1933, 40,000 would die from overcrowding in a combination with a lack of water, food, and medicine. But the people who struggled and could not keep up with the march were shot by the soldiers. The Italians constructed a 300 km barbed wire fence on the border with Egypt that was patrolled daily by armored cars and aircraft due to the rebels having created supply routes from Egypt. As part of the Senussi persecution, the Italians closed ziwas and mosques, and all Senussi practices were forbidden, with their estates also being taken from them. In 1931, Italian forces seized Kufra, the last stronghold of the Senussi in Libya, where the Senussi civilians were bombed and strafed. Many Senussis fled to the desert, but those who stayed suffered many atrocities committed by the Italians, such as the burning of the books of Sayyid Ahmad's library, the destruction of wells, the harassment of civilians, specifically women and children, and the killing of elderly and ulamas by being thrown from airplanes. In the same year, Senussi leader Mukhtar was wounded in a battle near Solonta and captured by the Italians. Three days later, trial by the 14th of September sentenced to death. And on the 16th of September of 1931, he was hanged publicly in Suluk. It's reported that when Mukhtar was giving his last words, he recited the Quran verse, To God we belong, and to him we shall return. Mukhtar's companions were also executed a few days later, on the 24th of September. Mukhtar's death effectively ended the resistance, and in January 1932, Badoglio proclaimed the end of the campaign. The brutal Second italo senussi War, or else known as the Pacification of Libya, was finally over. Thanks for watching, this was the Pacification of Libya. If you liked this episode, please give a like, and if you are not subscribed, subscribe, because I will be releasing more history videos for you. So thank you, and goodbye.